PWM stands for pulse width modulation, but this doesn't really tell the layman much at all. I mean, not like VRM, let's say, which stands for voltage regulator module. Pretty self-explanatory in that case. VRMs regulate voltage delivered to a processor by stepping it down to a much safer level. But pulse width modulation is a characteristic of certain fans in the PC realm. There are other applications, but we'll stick to that one because that's probably where you've heard it first. So what does it mean and why should you look for it? In essence, pulse width modulation is a method used for imitating analog wave patterns with a digital interface, and we can depict digital signals graphically with lines representing either on or off states. DC voltage is depicted as a straight line, and its y-intercept indicates the input voltage. In the computer realm, DC fans typically boast three pin fan headers. The first cable records the fan's RPM, the second sends the voltage, typically 12 or 5 volts, and the third acts as ground. These fans are typically a bit cheaper than their PWM counterparts and are less versatile from an RPM standpoint. So voltage fed down the second wire is varied to control fan speeds on these three pin fans. And that's according to the user's calibration, but minimum voltage is usually quite high, meaning that the minimum RPM for the fan won't be very low, which means that they won't run super quiet in most cases. If voltage drops below this minimum threshold, then the fan won't spin at all. But pulse width fans are a different story. Rather than varying voltage down the second line, voltage is fixed with the fourth pin active. So this fourth pin actually controls signal duration or the pulse width, and you see now where the name comes into play. And the longer the pulse from this wire, or the larger the gaps in the pulses, the lower the duty cycle, which essentially affects the RPM. The lower the duty cycle, the lower the RPM of the fan. For instance, this would represent a 25% duty cycle when the source voltage is fixed at 12 volts, but only in the on state 25% of the time. A duty cycle of 100% is equivalent to the fan running at its maximum input voltage, we'll say 12 volts for this example, and a duty cycle of 0% will stop the fan completely. An important note here, input voltage is constantly applied to these fans, and the pulse width modulator acts as the switch. So the longer the switch is closed, the more the circuit's closed, the longer voltage is applied to turn the fan on. You can think of PWM in another way too, strumming a guitar. So if I pluck one string every five seconds, you'll hear the sound spike, and then attenuate. It starts loud and then tapers off. The amplitude is similar to the RPM of the fan. So if you hit the fan with 12 volts in shorter intervals, or in this case, if you strum the string, let's say once every one second instead of five, then the medium has less time to attenuate, the amplitude stays higher overall, and this of course translates to the fan as a higher RPM. We can see this relation graphically if we match up fan RPM and voltage versus time. Pulse width modulation tuned to a 50% duty cycle looks something like this with our peak voltage at 12 volts, and in the dependent variable, that's rotations per minute depicted here. So when PW mode is active, the corresponding fan will literally turn on and off in essence by varying degrees to maintain the design desired RPM. That's why we can achieve such low RPMs with these fans. It just occurs so quickly that we don't see or hear it happening. And do keep in mind that these values and recoveries will vary from fan to fan. So in short, PWM is a better alternative to DC counterparts. Four pins are better than three in this case. You can achieve significantly lower RPMs thanks to untouched voltage levels, which means quieter fan profiles overall, and multiple fans can be synced up to the same PWM profile via fan hubs and splitters, since a constant voltage is applied in these situations. You can even plug 4-pin fans into 3-pin headers on your motherboard. They'll just operate in DC mode, so you get the best of both worlds. In a worst case, you don't have an extra 4-pin at your disposal. They're more versatile, efficient, and ergonomic, and should be strongly considered for your next case fans. I've linked several reputable kits in the video description below. My favorite are the Silent Wings 3 fans, both the 120mm and 140mm variants. They're extremely quiet, a bit pricey, but they look pretty good doing it at the same time. And of course, they've got to be PWM. Some of them are DC, so watch out. Check to see if they're 4-pin or 3-pin fans. If you like this video, be sure to let me know by giving this one a thumbs up. I appreciate it. Thumbs down for the opposite. You can click that red subscribe button if you haven't already. You can even uh, sponsor us if you really want to do that. When we have live streams, we're going to start kicking those off uh, more than once a week from now on, just because I think that's an interesting way to communicate with all of you. So stay tuned for those announcements on Twitter and elsewhere. This is Science Studio. Thanks for learning with us.